Welcome to another exciting episode of The Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Goy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. And today's topic comes up from something or other uh, that we were discussing. Do you remember when we were on the Jiminy Flippet show? I do remember parts of that, I'm sure. And there you parts, go. Uh, there's parts I may not remember. So. <laughs> <Hopefully we're laughs> Just in case, to... I got myself covered. <laughs> there you go. Uh, anybody who hasn't checked him out definitely check him out he's got a really good channel uh jiminy flip it um we were on a monday live show of his and it was a lot of fun it really was a lot of fun and we enjoyed it and we, we told him hey anytime you want to have us back yep. let us know we'll yeah. we'll even take our shoes off before we come in yeah certainly guys i can relate to you know basically they're not stiff so yeah there you go yeah. so my, what, kind, my kind of guys so what are you doing around me <laughs> um, true that being said um one of the questions or one of the things that came up and i want to know if you ever have fear during a purchase. Fear during a purchase. That's a good way to put it. Let me think about this one. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> fear. Well, I guess, yes, I have fear, but probably for a different reason. Not like, I don't fear spending 50000 because if I spend 50000 I know I'm going to get a hell of a deal. I would never do that unless I know it's okay. a, a massive deal. So that's not where I fear. My fear is, and it actually... I had a gut feeling, but I, you know, I did everything legally. Um, this guy brought in a bunch of cards. Mm -hmm. Not that it was too good to be true. He just didn't look like a guy that would have what he had. You know, five, six, ten thousand dollars in graded cards. You know, mm -hmm. and I said, well, you know, maybe his story is true. It's his and his brothers, and it's maybe you know they needed money for Christmas. It makes sense that they're selling these cards. You know. As long as I do everything by the book, I'm covered. So I get his ID. Right. And anybody, own, yeah. anybody that doesn't know a lot of areas, um, certainly up here in, in upstate New York, there's a program called Leads Online that is associated with the uh, the police officers have uh, access to it. And any purchases that are made through a secondhand store need to be put into the database um, and held for seven days, I believe the rule is. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and they have to be identified as such and all that. So basically what you do is you purchase the things, you put it into the database, you have to get the ID of the person, uh, you put the item off into the corner, you wait seven days. If there haven't been any problems, it's, yeah. it's you're allowed to sell it at that point. Now, obviously, right. if, if they came back on you six months later, Yes, I mean, obviously you have to give them whatever you have left, and they'll try to track down because, you know, you can't transfer bad title. Right. That being said, uh, you've covered your bases. You won't get right. in any trouble at yeah. that point because you bought it in good faith and did it, it did all the steps. But go ahead. Yeah. yeah, so I took all the information, put it on leads online, held it for seven days, and on the sixth day I get a call from the police, and the missing cards matched up to what I had. So, you know, it was cost of doing business. I lost whatever 1300 bucks but again i didn't go with my gut feeling because i was hoping to make you know you know make a couple two three grand on the deal and unfortunately it backfired on me but you know, those are the type of fears i worry about or a great deal that comes in and you know they want pennies on a dollar you know is it is it fake you know jordan say someone comes in with a jordan autograph well if it's not certified you know it looks real but that doesn't mean anything so i kind of would fear stuff like that that you're shelling out a lot of money for and it might be stolen or fake okay See, and I don't have those fears. Um, oddly, nobody steals a... Uh, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> a French uh, 1888 magazine. <laughs> uh, there you go. I was gonna say, nobody steals a 1944 postcard with rounded <laughs> edges that's worth $3. <clears throat> oddly, those are... Well, actually, somebody stole it from a mail. See our other video. But <laughs> no, oh, no, a win magazine. That's a oh, whole new no, ball game. No, 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 no. Whole new ball game. Oh, if, if, any, if they'll show up at any pawn shop, those obviously yeah. came from me, so yeah. send them back. Um, but my fear comes into when I go to a sale, usually an estate sale, and they've got... Now, I don't have any fear when I get back into the 1920s and 30s magazines. Things like that, I just I buy them. You know, if I'm paying a dollar, two bucks a piece, <clears> I know I can make money on those. My fear comes into you walk into a sale and the people were dedicated to one thing or another. Um, and you walk in and you see 500 magazines. They're all culinary. But titles that I haven't necessarily heard of and they want a dollar a piece. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're looking at them going, he's got to be halfway decent. But do I really want to tie up $500 on something or other like this? Right. 
you know, or the bonsai magazines, which you had good luck with, yeah. I could see walking into those at a sale from somebody that's into it. Mm -hmm. So my trepidation comes in when you get into those 1980s and 90s magazines in bulk where they had subscriptions to them month mm -hmm. after month after month, and they want a dollar a piece on them. <clears throat> you know, part of me is saying that's wait, not a magazine. Wait till the next day. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, they will certainly be there the next day, yes. Um, part of me is saying... Wait till the last day. That as well. Okay. Uh, wait till one minute before it closes down and say you want $10 for all of them. Exactly. No, but part of me is saying, um, I've never seen these before, so they're probably halfway decent. Mm -hmm. But the other side of me is saying, do I really want to tie up $50, $100, $200, depending on how many of them there are, right. for something or other that I've never had, and it's fairly new? you know. And, and I guess some of the sucker bets that I've, I've gotten into before that just are not as good as I would think they were, you get into um, a lot of the home handyman type magazines. Oh, I always turn those down. And from the I, 80s and 90s. There's probably some good ones, but I always turn them down. And at one point, early issues of at least one of those titles was really good. I don't know, it was high, fine, fine Home Building, I think it was. Okay. The early issues were good. Well, those are the things that you see out there because the guy was a, was a woodworker. So he's got four or five different titles that he collected for 10 to 15 years. Yeah. So he's got you know 150 to 180 each type of magazine. For six or seven different magazines, plus a couple of other oddball ones mixed in, or you're talking 800 to 1,000 magazines. Right. Yeah. You know, if they sit there and they say, hey, we just need them all gone, give us $100, I know it's a really good deal, right. but part of me still has this fear that I'm tying up $100 in incredibly slow moving merchandise that I will <clears throat> never get listed. Do you ever get those you feelings? Know, and even just like the carousel magazines, the same guy that sold me the bonsais, and luckily he didn't have. He now, what had, kind of carousel? Like the, the little horse ones. Yeah, little porcelain. I think it's a little porcelain ones. I don't think it's the big. Oh, all right. Hopefully that doesn't. I don't know. Could hopefully be. that I, doesn't. Get I didn't us, read them. I just looked at the cover. But it doesn't get us banned for a copyright violation because <laughs> yeah. I was right on when I did that music. Perfect. But, um, you know, they were, say, 50 or 100 of each one when I bought them. It's not the end of the world. So I told my employee, go, just list 10 or 20, see what happens. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to invest a whole day of listing. We right. sell one in a month, you know. Yep. And we did that, and they ended up selling. And I go, oh, just list the rest. So I guess you would do that. You know, if you buy 500, list 30 or 40, 50, and then leave it at that. If they don't sell, you're still into it, right? You'll sell them eventually, and you won't type a whole week of listing. I, and I guess that is one area where you definitely have an advantage <clears throat> because you can give one of the employees the pile to do. Even if you wanted to do them all, right. you could give the employees a, an entire pile and still have other stuff getting up to sell from <clears throat> other listers. Right, sure. Whereas I'm being a one-man band, if I, you know, if, if I picked up 500 magazines, even if I really, truly wanted to get them all listed, you're talking a week, week and a half. I mean, at least a week's worth of listing. Sure. Um, where I'm not listing anything else. Yeah. And, of course, that kills potentially other categories because there's nothing new going into those other. Like, no, right. none of my comic books <clears throat> are going to sell because I'm not listing any comic books. None of my something yeah. else is going to sell. What, have you, what did you list for the whole week? Oh, home building magazines. Yeah. An entire week worth of it. Well, sometimes it's just, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, it's negative. It's just, you know, it's not worth listing them because what will happen is, You'll list them for a week, and then what? They don't sell? You're going to get down on yourself, and then next time you won't buy that something as well. So you're scared the next time around. Yes. You know, that's the problem. It's a trickle effect. So. Yeah, no, it definitely is. So I wonder what are out there. If you could comment down below if if there are, if you get the same feeling. You know, and again, I don't get that feeling with the, uh, you know, if, if I went to a sale and they had $3 each, French magazines from the 1880s, Right. I'm not having any fear at all buying it. I will buy those because I know that French magazines, <clears throat> even though it's three yeah. to four times the price that I'm talking about on these yeah. other magazines, right. I absolutely know that I can sell a French magazine from 1881. I got a dilemma for you. Go ahead. So you buy, what's the, so would you treat it differently if you bought them for $100, $300, or if you got them all for $10? As far as listing them. If you bought them for $10, you're more likely to list them all. I know because you only paid ten, or would you list them all if you That's paid two? That's a really fit, good right? question. Yeah. Um, Sometimes I fall in the sucker trap of that, where if I got a great deal on something, oh, I got nothing into it, list it all 
because I, you know if it all sells, I'm going to make a killing. But See, and I think I fall into the opposite <laughs> side of that trap where I wouldn't list any because I'd say it's only ten bucks. Yeah, Who cares? Quarter, we'll get to it some, yeah. Or I could flip it. I could lot it out. You can't lose out on it. But or I could yeah. find some sucker that's got magazine in his name and bring him to him and get a quarter piece out of him. Yeah. Good good that's, actually, that person. that's actually a really good question. Yeah, Look right. at you. You came alive for this video. That's a yeah. plus. Well, I wanted to ask it three minutes ago, and then my mind froze, and I was talking gibberish, so <laughs> I just had to think about it and you know, rewind myself. Well, hit the like so. button for Mr. Magazine actually waking up during a video, and yeah. if you want him to continue to do night. so, <laughs> do, do comment down below on that. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we will see you next video. Take care. Bye-bye.